All right, guys, welcome to Inverse Functions Notes. Um, these are here just in case you miss class or just need a refresher on certain things. Um, so a function is said to be one-to-one -one if and only if every value for y corresponds to only one x value. All right, one y value and one x value. So that means x values cannot repeat. So we'll be looking to see if these functions are one-to-one -one by checking if the x values repeat or if the y values repeat. So we can see that the domains have no repeating x values. And then once looking at here, we have 2, 4, 6, negative 2, 1, 4, 9, 1. So the ones are repeating here. That means, yes, this one is one-to-one. -one. And no, this one is not one to one. All right. Um, we could use the horizontal line test to determine if a function is one to one. The horizontal line test means that we will draw a horizontal line and cross the graph of a function in at most one place, then the function is one to one. So as I go across this graph, the function is not one to one because it crosses the graph in two places. So this one is a no. All right, when I go look at B, I can tell that this function is one-to-one -one because it only crosses the graph in one place each time. So that one is a yes. Now C is a little bit trickier. If I cross the graph up here horizontally, yes, it would be one-to-one. -one. However, if I were to go across at the x-axis, um, it kind of comes through the x-axis, so it would touch it multiple times. So no, it is not one-to-one. -one. We are not gonna be worrying about what parent functions are one-to-one. -one. Um, since we haven't reviewed parent functions this year, we're not gonna be looking at that specifically. All right, only one-to-one -one functions have inverses that are functions. I'm gonna lower this down so we can see. All right, this means that f of g of x equals x and g of f of x equals x. So what we're going to do is determine if the following functions are inverses. So that means that I take g of x and I plug it into f of x as x and it will simplify to just x. So if I take g of x, which is x over 2, and I plug it in as the x value for 2x, and if I simplify this, that is 2x over 2, which is just x. So if I, f of g of x does equal x, this is true, as we just checked. Now I'm gonna go do the reverse of that, and I'm going to plug in 2x as the x value in g of x. And again, we are left with just x, so g of f of x does equal x when simplified. All right, on to B, we're gonna do the exact same thing. So I'm taking g of x, which is one over four x minus five, and I am plugging this in as x for x, f of x. So four x minus 20. Ooh, I'm gonna distribute everything. Four times one fourth is just gonna be one, so that's just gonna be x minus 20 minus 20, which is equal to x minus 40. So from the f of g of x perspective, it, um, it is not an inverse. So we're gonna double check it by just going the other way as well. So we are gonna take four x minus 20 and plug that in as x for 1 fourth x minus five and distribute that 1 fourth. Four times 1 fourth is just x, 1 fourth, times 20, that's 20 divided by four, would be minus five minus five, which is equal to x minus 10. So that means g of f of x is equal to x minus 10, and no, that does not equal x. So these are not inverses here. All right, let's check C. Um, we are going to plug in g of x, x cubed minus 5, as 
has the x value plus 5. All right, negative 5 plus 5 is 0. So, and then we have the cube root of x cubed. Those cancel each other out, so we're left with just x. And that is f of g of x. Beautiful. All right, we're going to double check it by going the other way around. So we're going to take the cube root of x plus 5, and we're plugging this in as the x cubed minus 5. And again, the cube root and the cubed cancel each other out, so we're left with just x plus 5 minus 5, and those cancel each other out. So that means that g of f of x is also x. So yes here, yes here, yes, these are inverses. All right, on to the next page. So think of the inverse of a function as the reverse of a function. The inverse function undoes the operations that were done to the function. So we have looked at two functions and been able to say yes or no are these inverses. Now we're going to look at one function and say what is the inverse. So we are going to use these steps here to find the inverse. So to find the inverse, replace f of x with y. All right, we're going to start with step one. We're going to replace f of x with y is equal to 2x minus 4. Swap x and y. So that means I'm going to swap y becomes x and x becomes y. Solve for y. And that's going to happen down here. We're going to move that 4 over, move that 4 over. We get x plus 4 is equal to 2y. Divide by 2, divide by 2. We are left with x over 2 plus 4 over 2, which is 2, is equal to y. This is also the same as saying 1 half x plus 2 is equal to y. So we put it into a y equals mx plus b formula, which is always going to be the best way to do it because a lot of times you're going to have to graph it. Not only do we have to graph the inverse that we came up with, but we also have to graph the original. And I'm going to show you how to view on the graph that it is an inverse as well. So we're going to start with the 2x minus 4. All right, that's a positive 2x. So up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1. Up two over, up two over, up two over, up two over. Beautiful. Right, and there is our um, y equals two x minus four graph. And now let's look for the other one. So that is going to be mx plus b, so plus two. Up 1 over 2, we have a positive 1 half. Right, and this is how that graph looks. One half x plus 2. All right. Properties of inverse functions. I will tell you that f of x and f inverse x are reflections of each other with respect to the line y equals x. If I were to graph y equals x, it would go directly through the origin across. And this is why if I were to take 2x minus 4 and flip it over the axis, or the, I guess the y equals x line, then it, cre cre it creates a, um, a reflection of it. So that's another way that you can kind of view that it is an inverse. All right, find the inverse of the one-to-one -one function, graph both the function and its inverse on the same grid. So first things first, we're gonna find the inverse. So step one, f of x becomes y equals the cube root of x plus one. Then we are going to flip the x and the y, so x becomes, or it becomes x equals the cube root of y plus 1. And then we're going to work um, backwards to solve for y. So what I had to get rid of the cube root, I have to cube it. Whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other. So then, and I'll go ahead and put this here. We have x cubed is equal to, and now I will just write y plus 1. Move the 1, 
move the one and we're left with x cubed minus one is equal to y. All right, I already know that a cube root, a cubic function is going to look something like this here. Now this is a cube root minus one, so it's gonna go through negative one. Um, and if it's one goes through one zero, and if it were negative one, it would be negative one minus one, which gives me to negative two. Um, and that's about all I can really put as far as like the cubic is concerned. If it's three, um, or if it's two, it would be eight minus seven, so two seven. And then it would also be negative two, negative eight, negative nine, negative two, negative nine. So it would be coming down this way. So this is, it was much easier to graph the inverse first um, because it's x cubed minus one is equal to y instead of, instead of a cube root, which is what we're about to graph. I'm going to go ahead and kind of like dot my inverse line here so that I have it. Um, and so the inverse graph, like the original f of x, should look a little bit differently. Um, let's start by graphing. And if you need help with, if you need to utilize Desmos a little bit to help you graph something, you're more than welcome to do that, especially if it's like a cube root graph. Um, I'm going to go ahead and utilize that a little bit. So it's an x plus 1. And I'm just going to graph it to the one third just to kind of get an idea of what it's going to look like. So I know if I were to plug in zero into this original, I would get zero plus one, which is one. The cube root of one is going to be one. So I know that that one crosses at zero one. Um, if I were to plug in a negative one, it would be negative one plus one, which is zero, and the cube root of zero is zero. So that crosses at negative one, zero. And I'm just kind of plugging in points as I go. And if I were to plug in, let's see, I'm trying to think of another point that I can use. If I were to plug in negative two, negative two plus one is a negative one, cube root of negative one is also negative one. So that's kind of where, this one's going to be coming across here. So from there, I can kind of shade. Um, it turns the corner there. So it's going to come down. It doesn't, the whole thing doesn't have to be perfect, but I am just kind of um, shading along. So I'm more concerned with like the three main points at where the, the, um, the cubic turns and like, changes direction. Um, so as long as you can graph those correctly, it's still going to kind of point you in the right direction of what that graph needs to look like. All right, and then we have one more, and that is it. So we have f of x is equal to square root of x minus 2. All right, step one, f of x becomes y is equal to square root of x minus 2. Step two, switch x and y. x becomes the square root of y minus 2. I will square both. We are on to step three. X squared is equal to Y minus two. I'm gonna move that two over. X squared plus two is equal to Y. All right, I know that that's gonna be just a parabola shifted up two units. All right, so if it were one, one squared is one plus two is three. So at one, three, and also negative one, three. And at two, it'd be two squared, which is four, plus two is six. So I go ahead and put two, six, and negative two, six. And that's about all um, I'm going to be able to put for the parabola. All right, and this is x squared plus two is equal to y there. So let me go ahead and kind of shade what that inverse line is gonna look like. All right, now I have to draw the original, which is the square root of x minus 2. Okay, if I were to plug in 0 for x, 
it would be square root of negative 2, which doesn't exist. The square root of a negative does not exist. All right, if I were to plug in 1, I would also end up with a square root of negative 1 does not exist. So this graph doesn't start until we get to 2. And that actually shows here because this is shifted to the right two units. So I actually should have known that right off the bat, but just to clarify. All right, if it were 3, 3 minus 2 is 1, square root of 1 is 1. So we have a 3 comma 1. And if it's 4, 4 minus 2 is 2. Square root of 2 is going to be 1 point something. It's just going to kind of increase. 5, um, let's go with 6. 6 minus 2 is 4. Square root of 4 is 2. So that one's just kind of curving. We know what the square root um, function looks like. And it's going to kind of lead that direction. So part of it um, is reflected across that y equals x here. All right, and that is it on inverse functions today.